Good day, Great Tolls. Welcome to the final lesson in our September exam prep. Please understand that this is just a sample of the type of questions that you could get for September. And I've tried to hit the questions that are come up quite often, that are quite, quite tricky, and contain a lot of marks and that students struggle on. Please go back to the different sections and go through the exam preps and the control tests and the questions on the turnable system to make sure that you cover everything that you need to. Right, so the first question is an organic chemistry question. So we've got hexanoic acid, this thing here, which is obviously an alcohol because it's got an hydroxyl group. This thing here has got a double bond, so we're thinking it's an alkene. This has got a bromine and a double bonded O, so that's interesting. This dude here has only got an O and it's on the end, so it's an aldehyde. Aldehyde. And this dude here, we need to draw out to see, but it is definitely one of the alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. Okay, now it says the letters A to F in the table below represent six organic compounds. So what I did now, just by reading through this, this is what I want you guys to do during your 10 minutes of reading time. I want you, obviously you can't write it down, but I want you to read through it and identify in your head what is going on so that, and read through these questions because then when the exam time actually starts, most of you will have probably answered most of these questions before you even actually start writing the paper and that's pretty awesome because that means you've gained a whole bunch of time for the other questions that might be a little bit more tricky. Now it says, use the information in the table where applicable to answer questions that follow. Write down only the letter that represents a compound, that A, and it also says a compound may be used more than once or not at all. The one some letter is an unsaturated compound. So saturated something is with something that is single bonded. So an unsaturated is going to be this guy, which is obviously letter C. 2.1.2 has an hydroxyl group as a functional group. There you go. That's B, our alcohol. Now it says write down the IUPAC name of compound C. Okay, so we've got double bonded over there which we actually have to go through that double bond because it is the part of the functional group. Now we need to count. We got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the longest arm is going to be five. So we might as well count from the left because we always count closer to the functional group and this is just branches. So it's going to be one, two, three, four and five. So five is pent, do we agree? Pent and the double bond means that it's pent in and we're finding it on carbon two. Okay, so you're either going to write pent two in or you're going to write two pent in. I don't mind which you prefer. Then you can see that there is a methyl group here and a methyl group here. So we need to tell them where the methyl groups are. So it's going to be 2, 3, dimethyl. And a lot of my students ask, why do we have to write di if we write 2, 3, methyl? Because guys, okay, if you just, why do you have, because if you write 2, 3, just methyl, then they don't know whether to put the methyl group on the 2 or the 3, okay? So that's why you write 2, 3, dimethyl, 2, pentene. Okay, so that's that one done. Now they want the IUPAC name of compound D. Compound D. Okay, so do you agree that D is interesting because it's got a bromine here, but it's also got a double bonded O, which is not at the end, it's at, so therefore this is definitely something with an anel on it, okay? It's a ketone. This is a ketone with a bromine on it, okay? And it's got a methyl group. Right, so let's first count the longest chain. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the seven is going to be hept, and because it's a ketone, it's going to be heptanol. So it's going to be heptanol. But we need to tell them where we find in the double bonded O. So it's going to be two heptanol. Then what do we do? Now we need to realize we're counting one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. Now, do you agree that this is a bromo and this is a methyl group? And whenever you are labeling your groups within front of your original proper name for your for your molecule, you need to go alphabetical, not numerical, alphabetical. So even though this is on six and this is on five, we do number six first. So we go six bromo, then we go comma, five methyl, and then two heptanol. I apologize for being all squished up. Okay, so it's six bromo, five methyl, two heptanol. Then it asks you for the structural formula of compound F, which is great because the only way I'm going to know what's going on here is if I draw it out. So I'm going to start on the right hand side because we know that carbon's got four arms and three of them are taken up with hydrogen. So we've got one, two, three. Then we've got, so that's those two, one arm left for a carbon that's there. And then we've got another carbon and a hydrogen. So I'm thinking this has to be a triple bond. So there needs to be a triple bond between this carbon and that carbon. Okay, so that's awesome. So there is your structural formula of compound F. Now it says consider the terms isomers. Which compound in the table is a functional isomer of ethyl butanate? So ethyl butanoate, if we think about it, ethyl's got two carbons and then it's got a butanoate. So remember that this is a what? It's an ester. So how do esters work? It is going to be an O, then C, and there's four of them. So it's going to be double bonded O and then it's three, four, one, two, three, four and the rest is hydrogens. So do you agree with one, two, three, four, five, six carbons and we've got two oxygens and the rest are hydrogens. So let's see here if there's anything here that's got six carbons, two oxygens and basically a whole bunch of hydrogens. And the only one here that I can see, oh, it's going to have to be hexanoic acid. Because hexanoic acid is six carbons, there's the hex, and the oic acid tells you it's a carboxylic acid, and the carboxylic acid functional group is COOH. There you go. So it's got six carbons, two oxygens, a whole bunch of hydrogens. So the correct answer for that is A. Now it says draw the structural formula of a chain isomer of compound E. Okay, a chain isomer just means really that you need to place that O somewhere else. So instead of it being on the end, we can put it anywhere else. So we could go CH3, except they want the structural formula. So therefore we've got C, one, two, three, two, how many carbons are there in this? One, two, three, four. Okay, two, three, four. Let's put the double bonded over here and then the rest one, two, three, four, that's fine, and there you go. And then, obviously, your little hydrogens everywhere. And guys, you cannot leave out your hydrogens. You leave out your hydrogens, you are going to get it wrong. So there you go. There is a chain isomer of compound E. All it's done is moved your oxygen onto somewhere in the chain, so you've changed it from an aldehyde to a ketone. Now it says, draw the structural formula for the organic compound formed when compounds A and B react in the presence of sulfuric acid. So I'm going to erase this because I need the space. So we're adding hexanoic acid to an alcohol. So when you have a CU, a carboxylic acid and an alcohol mix up, we get an ester plus water. Okay. So this alcohol has got one, two, three. So that is going to be propanol. Right. So they want us to draw the structural formula for the compound that's formed. So this bit here is propanol and this is hexanoic acid. So what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with propyl hexanoate. That's how it joins. So prop is three, so it's going to be C, C, C. They join it with the oxygen. Then it's C double bonded O and what's this got six hydrogen six carbons. One, two, that's three, four, 
five, six, oopsie. And then everywhere here is going to be hydrogens. And guys, I'm not writing in all the hydrogens. You guys have to write them in. Okay, so that's our question on organic chemistry. Let's have a look at a different type of question. Now it says, Sarah wants to investigate the rate at which the reaction proceeds. A reaction proceeds and places a beaker containing dilute nitric acid on a sensitive balance in a fume cupboard. He, she drops a few pieces of copper metal into the beaker. The mass readings of the beaker and the contents are recorded every 15 seconds. There we go. From the moment the copper metal is dropped into the acid until there's no more copper metal content. So they've given us a table. Now it says, the reaction that occurs is represented by the following equation. So you've got copper plus nitric acid gives you copper nitrate plus nitrogen dioxide plus water and delta H is greater than naught, which means this is an endothermic reaction, endothermic. Give a reason why the mass of the beacon contents decrease as well. If you look at this, you can see that there is nitric oxide gas given off. So what is happening is that the gas is bubbling off and as the gas is bubbling off it is losing mass. So that's the answer to that. Now it says use the values in the table and calculate the average rate in grams per second for the whole 150 seconds of the reaction. Okay, so to work out basically your average rate you are going to look at the change in mass over the change in time degree. So D said the total decrease in mass is 6.3. So that's 6.3 and the total time is 150 seconds. So all we have to do is plop the 6.3 divided by 150 into calculator. So we've got 6.3 divided by 150 and that gives us 0, 0, 0.042. So the change is 0, 0, 0.042 grams per second. That is the rate at which, the average rate at which this is losing mass. Now we've got a pretty graph and it's a decrease in mass. Notice the decrease in mass versus time. And it says give a reason for the shape of the graph from 105 to 120. So 105 is about over here to 120. So do you see that at this point, what has happened? There is no more decrease in mass, which means, and this is important, that the reaction has run to completion. It is finished. Okay, it's not reached dynamic equilibrium. This is not an equilibrium question. This is just a straight reaction of copper reacting with nitric, nitric acid, giving off gas and forming a bunch of other things. Okay. Now it says, give a reason why the reaction rate increases from 0 to 3 seconds. This is because the particles are coming into contact with each other and as they come into contact with each other, they react and therefore there will be a speeding up the reaction. And why is it decreasing from 45 to 105? Well, because the reactants are being used up. And as they're being used up, there are fewer reactants available to have effective collisions and therefore the reaction rate slows down. Now it says, explain your answer in question, oh, uh, done it. Explain your answer in terms of the coll collision theory. Guys, when they say collision theory, what are they asking you for? They're asking you to use the phrase effective collisions per unit time. So what we're saying is the rate of reaction decreases between 45 seconds and 105 seconds. Why? Because the number of the re reactants is decreasing. In fact, the concentration of the reactants is reactants is decreasing. Therefore, there are fewer reactants available to, for effective collisions per unit time. Therefore, the reaction rate decreases. Guys, you have to use this phrase, effective collisions per unit time. Okay, and an re increase in reaction rate would be the more effective collisions per unit time. Decrease in reaction rate, fewer effective collisions per unit time. If we increase the surface area, we've got a greater possibility of more effective collisions per unit time. Get it? Important, very important phrase. Please use it. And you may not use PUT for per unit time. You will write out per unit time if you want to get the marks.
Right, now it says calculate the mass of copper used in the reaction. What is the mass of copper used in this reaction? So we need to go back to the original equation, which says CuS plus 4HNO3 gas goes to CuNO32 plus 4NO gas plus 2H2O. And what we've seen is there's a decrease in mass of 6 comma 3 grams but that's all due to the nitric oxide gas given off okay everything else this is aqueous this is liquid this is aqueous this is solid the only the nitric oxide is being given off so what we need to do is actually find out the number of moles that's given off so that we can relate it to the number of moles okay so number of moles is mass over molar mass the mass is 6,3 and now you need your periodic table because we need to find out the molar mass of nitric oxide and nitrogen has got a molar mass of 14 and oxygen has a molar mass of 16. So if we've got 6,3 divided by 30 and we need to get out a calculator so we go 6,3 div try again 6.3 divided by 30 equals 0,21. So the number of moles is 0,21. But now if we look at this, do you see that our mole ratio is 1 copper to 4 NO? So therefore, if we've only got 0,21, what do we need to do? To get to the amount of copper, we need to divide this by 4, which is going to be 0, 0, 5 moles. So we've used 0,05 moles of copper, but they didn't ask for the moles, they asked for the mass. Okay, let's go back to the question, and you'll see it asks for the mass. So we know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. So therefore, the mass is equal to number of moles times by the molar mass. So that's going to be 0, 0,05 times by the molar mass of copper. And if you look in your periodic table, you see that copper is 63,5, 63,5. So then again, we need our calculators. And we go 0, 0, 0,05 times 63.5 equals 3 comma one seven five grams but grade twelves you always run up to two decimal places so it's three comma one eight grams and there you go right grade twelves that is a very typical very nice rates of reaction question please make sure you can do these questions if you don't understand this section go to the section on rates of reactions and go watch the videos and go do the questions in the turnable system have a great day